Okay, to continue, ladies and gentlemen, we have Daniel Zentai with our second presentation of the afternoon. Thank you. Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Daniel Zentai, and uh, I'm the head of cryptography research at uh, Extender. Uh, we are a small company located here in Budapest, and uh, currently we are working on a, a data collaboration uh, platform. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, basically, we, we want to have several clients, customers, and they, and they want to upload their data in a common database and then run some queries uh, over the encrypted data without gaining too much information about the data up uploaded by the other participants. So, uh, the presentation will look like this. Uh, we will have some introduction first, then some legal definitions, and, uh, and then I will describe an, uh, a custom anonymization protocol developed by, developed by us. Uh, I will describe it in, in details, and, uh, and then I also will describe a pseudonymization protocol, <coughs> at least a sketch of it. We, will, we won't go uh, that much details into it. And then I will talk about uh, a bit about uh, fully homomorphic encryption and then our uh, future plans. So, as I said, uh, in this data collaboration platform, uh, we, we have some uh, customers who want to upload uh, a bunch of data in a custom database, and, uh, and the data should be stored uh, in an encrypted way, and, uh, and, and also the customers want to uh, gain some statistics out of it or, or run some queries in the database while the data uh, remains encrypted. So potential use cases uh, could be gaining statistics uh, out of medical records without knowing the identity of the, the patient or, uh, or fraud detection in, in, in insurance companies to detect double claims. But if nobody does any suspicious, we, we, do, we don't want to know about the, the, the clients of the other uh, insurance companies. So uh, our approach is uh, we want to uh, partition the data into two sets, identifiers and attribute, attributes. And ID will, will be anything that, uh, that can uniquely identify the data subject, like passport number or, or uh, ID card number or something like this. And, uh, and the attributes will be any other data, like uh, hair color, color or age or something that, that doesn't uh, identify uniquely uh, the data subject. Uh, sometimes it no, it's not that easy uh, what uh, counts as an identifier because the height of the tallest person in the world is, is a pretty unique identifier. But, but let's say we can discuss it with our customers and, and, and we can separate uh, our, our uh, database into, base into two sets. So we are using a, a custom anonymization or pseudonymization protocol on the IDs and we will use fully homomorphic encryption on the attributes. Now, what is the difference between anonymization and uh, pseudonymization? So at, at first sight, uh, it doesn't look any different, but, uh, but in GDPR, it, 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 these are two uh, very different uh, definitions because uh, GDPR, these are not uh, the most precise legal definitions because I'm not a lawyer and uh, this is just uh, one, this is just how I uh, interpreted these definitions to myself. So basically anonymization is a process that is not uh, reversible. So you have some personal IDs and you do something with it and the output of this something can, uh, cannot be reversed, and uh, and you and you under no cir circumstances uh, you can get, you can get back to the original IDs. Pseudonymization, on the other hand, it is a reversible uh, process. You can you can uh, you can get the original uh, identifier 
if you have some additional information like a decryption key or something like that. So with some additional information, you can get the original ID from the pseudonyms. And uh, according to GDPR, uh, anonymized data is no longer consider considered as personal data, but pseudonymized uh, data is considered as personal data. So, uh, the first thing, uh, if we want to anonym anonymize uh, the IDs, we, we, we have to discard any uh, encryption techniques because encryptions, by definition, they are reversible. They can be, uh, they can be decrypted with a decryption key. So the first thing that uh, comes to our mind is, is some hashing. So the problem with it is, uh, is identifiers are usually, usually pretty easy to brute force. So for example, the, in Hungary, the ID card number is, is six digits and two letters. That is not, not a very complex uh, password, so you can easily uh, brute force it if you, if you get the hash of it. So then the second thing that, that, that comes to my mind is, uh, is some keyed hash. So put the identifier and some secret key in the hash, and the output is a, is a anonymization technique. The problem with it, we, we, we don't want to let the, the customers to, to calculate the, the anonymization functions on their own. Because if they can calculate it on their own, they can locally brute force the, the anonymized data. So, so we have to protect the customers from each other, not only some attacker. So our requirements in this anonymization protocol, we want a transformation that is one way. So you, from the, from the anonymiza output of the anonymization function, you can't get the original identifier. The results should be hard to brute force and all of the clients are required to, to perform this uh, anonymization protocol. And uh, the other more uh, tricky stuff, the, the output of the anonymization should be the same uh, regardless of, uh, of which participant initiated the anonymization. So if, if the first insurance company have an ID of a customer and, and and they want to anonymize it, then the output will be the same if, if a second uh, insurance company have the same customer and with the same ID. So that's, we that's what we want to do with the IDs. And also uh, on the attributes, we, we, are, we, we want to enable the clients to, to run some queries. Now, uh, we have to talk about some mathematics, so it's a good time to run out from the, from the room if you are afraid. If, what you see here is, uh, is it looks like pretty complicated, but, uh, but believe me, it's not. So basically, uh, we have two big prime numbers, like 2,000 bits or something like this, or really big uh, prime numbers. And, uh, and we choose two values, alpha and beta, and they are primitive elements of ZP, which is the cyclic, cyclic, gr cyclic group with cardinality P. So, if you don't understand uh, what this means, then don't worry about it. Uh, it's a pretty complicated sentence that describes a, a, a pretty easy algebraic, algebraic structure. So this, this uh, ZP is just a set of the numbers between one and P minus one. And, uh, and the cyclic group means if you, if you calculate anything with these elements, addition and, or multiplication, or raise it to a power or something like that, then you always take the, the reminder modulo p. So for example, if, if p equals seven, then uh, I don't know, two times, two times four is eight, but uh, if you divide it by seven, then the reminder, reminder will be one. So the result is one. So anytime you add or multiply two numbers together, you get the remainder modulo this prime number p. That's all we uh, have to know about it. And this uh, primitive element uh, means if you, if, if you start to raise this alpha and beta into vari various uh, powers, then eventually you will get every element between one and p minus one. So to give you an example, if, 
if again p equals seven, then uh, and uh, and you choose choose the number two. Then if you if you start to ca calculate the, the powers of two, the, the first power is two, the second is four, the third power, third power is of, of two will be eight, but you get the remainder uh, if you divide it by seven, so it's one. And after one, you get two again, and four, and one. So this is a situation that we don't want. Because if p equals seven, that we have a, a set of six numbers, and if you, if you calculate the if we calculate the power powers of two, then out of these six possible numbers, we, we, we can only get three of them. So it's a it's a smaller subset. And this is what we don't want. So uh, after these definitions, there is a not so well known hash function. This, this is called Chaum uh, Van Heist and Fitzman hash. And you can see if you. Uh, the, the hash of two values x and y is alpha to the power x times beta to, to the power y, and you take the remainder modulo p. So that is the hash we, we want to use, use in the anonymization protocol. Uh, this is not a well-known hash, uh, not because it's not secure, it's, 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 uh, it's, coll it's collision resistant if the discrete logarithm, logarithm problem is hard. But uh, it's it's much less efficient than than the more widely used uh, used hash function less like the SAJ family. So it, it's a bit slower. Now, how how does uh, our anonymization protocol work? So we have a set of uh, participants. Let's call them P1, P2, and Pn, and we have a server. Let's call it S. And suppose that the client. For example, P1 wants to anonymize an identifier. So P1, uh, all, all clients generate uh, two random secret keys. These are uh, X, I, and Y, Y sub I. So uh, these are two private keys, for, private keys for all of the participants. And if the server receives an, an upload request from, from, the, from, from, the, from the participant P1, then the server generates n different random numbers and, uh, and sends the encrypted version of it to the participants uh, with the uh, private key, uh, sorry, the public key of that particular participant. So this part is, is not for the anonymization. This is just a simple challenge response uh, protocol because the, the server sends out the random values, and, and the, if all of the random, random values uh, came back to the server, then the server can be sure that uh, everybody participated in the computation, and that's what we want. So the, this part is just a challenge response. This is not for anonymization. But what the anonymization part is about uh, is the, the first participant calcul calculates the, the hash of uh, x1 plus the id and y1 so this is the, the hash of the first participant the, the, the first participant includes into the hash his uh, his private keys and the id and sends it to the second participant every other participant multiply the the value that he that he received from the previous participant multiply it with his own uh, hash value so if participant number seven will multiply the, the product of the first six value with, uh, with h of uh, x seven, y seven. That's what they do. And the last participant will, will send this value uh, to the server. And this value is the multiplica multiplication of, of uh, every participant's hashes. And because the hash is calculated uh, this way that I show you, so the hash is just a multiplication, then uh, regardless of uh, who initiated the, the anonymization, the final result is if you multiply all these values together, the final result will be the same denoted by uh, Hn. So the, the exponent uh, uh, in, in the uh, alpha base will be id plus the sum of x's, and the exponent of beta will be the sum of y, uh, y's, regardless of uh, who initiates the anonymization. 
Now, uh, we, we have a proof of concept uh, of this protocol. And the, the run, running time looks like this. Uh, it's, uh, it's not so good if, uh, if we have uh, many participants or, uh, or many uh, records that we want to uh, anonymize if we do it over ZP. But if we are using elliptic curves, uh, this is much better. So if one, uh, two, two participants can run the protocol with, uh, with one data record in, uh, in 15 millis milliseconds. So it's, it's, it's okay. Not the fastest hash ever, but, uh, but it's okay. So we are using elliptic curves. It, uh, since the, the security of the hash relies on the discrete logarithm problem, then every algebraic, algebraic structure can uh, work uh, where the discrete logarithm problem is hard. So that's the anonymization part. Uh, I will say a few words about pseudonymization, just a few words because uh, we are not developing this yet. Because anonymization is, is, a, is a stronger technique. Pseudonymization, the only case where it's important if you, if you want to recover the original data from the anonymized identifiers. But for pseudonymization, uh, we can use a, a simple LGOML encryption. LGOML is a public key encryption based on the discrete logarithm problem. So it, it has a similar setup with the, with the cyclic groups and the, and the private key is, is, a, is the exponent, and the public key is a primitive element raised to these exponents. And uh, every, every participant can, can have their own key. And if, and if they, multi, if they add, uh, add together the private keys, then uh, they have a master private key. That's why if, if they multiply the, pu the public keys together, they will have a master public key. So it, I, I won't go any more details into it because this is not the first version of, uh, of our platform. We are, uh, we are not that far from uh, being finished with the, with the first version. Uh, as I said, we have, we have a, a working proof of concept and, uh, and it, it should be a, a, a finished uh, product in, in the next one or two months. But that's with the anonymization protocol. That's our first uh, version. So uh, I don't have too much time left, but uh, I, want, I want to say a few words about fully homomorphic encryption. Basically, it, uh, full, FAG is, is a type of, type of encryption where you, you can uh, perform arbitrary computation on the ciphertext. And, uh, and the result, if you, if you decrypt the result, it will be the same as if you perform this computation on the plain text. So the, we, are, we are encrypting uh, the, the attributes with fully homomorphic encryption, and this way the participants can run queries on them without revealing the, the identities of, of the uh, data subject because the identities are, are not stored with fully homomorphic encryption, they are stored with the anonymization protocol. So the main problem with it is it's a bit slower, not a bit, it's a lot slower than, uh, than the widely used encryption schemes, but uh, we are working on this one. So some future directions. Uh, we, we want to have a, a version uh, where, uh, where we can eliminate the, the server, so a decentralized version. You may ask, uh, why don't we start with this one? Because from a security per, uh, perspective, the decentralized version is, is better than the centralized, ver centralized version. It's because of legal concerns. Because uh, if, if we have a centralized version, then every client uh, have, to, have to sign a, a contract with only us. And in a decentralized version, everybody have to sign the contract with everybody else. So it's a, from a legal, legal perspective, it's a much, much more complicated version. Uh, another future, future direction will be add the differential privacy into the system. Uh, differential privacy is a, is a technique where you sacrifice some, uh, some accuracy to gain some more privacy. For example, if, if the clients want to protect their data even from each other, 
and and they don't want to don't want the other participants uh, to know the exact uh, output of uh, of the of the queries then they can add some carefully chosen random noise into their data and uh, and the output will be a somewhat accurate uh, but but not completely accurate uh, uh, answer so uh, another future direction would be a, a threshold protocol when not all the participants is, uh, are required to perform the computation, but, uh, but um, only a subset of them. Uh, we have a solution that, on paper that, uh, that works, but uh, it's a bit more complicated and, and I'm not sure it will be, it will be fast enough to, to do it in practice. Uh, an even more interesting uh, future direction will be to make it a, a post-quantum algorithm and uh, we, we don't have too much idea about it. I mean, we have some idea, but, uh, but it's not even close to being a, a finished product. And currently we are uh, experimenting with, uh, with some hardware accelerations of FAG because it's, uh, it's pretty slow. So, uh, I think uh, that's all that I wanted to uh, tell you. So thanks for the at your attention and uh, if you are interested, check our uh, web pages uh, because we, we should finish our, our product uh, in the next one or two months. So thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Daniel.